Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Clayton, this is Super V World. I know it's been a long, long time since I made a video, but this one is on my dual cam trigger and crank sensor kit for the 2JZ GE. Stay tuned. So first of all, why do we need this and what does this kit do? Well, the short answer is it controls engine speed and timing. The better answer is if you're turbocharging your non-VVTi 2JZ GE engine, you need a reliable and accurate way to time the engine. They are input sensors that go into your ECU, become software, and spit out decisions as to when an ignition event's going to happen, when the injectors are going to squirt, etc., etc. Basically, every crucial decision that the engine makes has to come from these sensors alone. The most important one of them being the crank sensor. The cam sensors, or the home sensor, is just there to basically give a reference to the crank to know where it is in its rotating cycle. But the crank sensor is fixed solid to the crank by this thing here. The keyway here goes straight onto the crankshaft. This thing rotates. It runs over a sensor right here as the teeth pass it by. That tells you exactly where the crankshaft is. The crankshaft is fixed to the pistons. The pistons go up and down. So it is an absolutely perfect triggering system for your engine. As long as you've got it set up properly in the software, that's it, it's done. Job done, perfectly. So let's have a look at how your 2JZ GE non-VVTi engine is triggered as stock. Well, you got this thing, the distributor. Yeah. So where is this located on the engine? Well, it certainly isn't on the crank, is it? In fact, it's all the way up the top, stuck into the side of the head. So basically, you've got the crankshaft going around the bottom. Then you've got a belt that goes up around the top of the cam gears, then you've got a camshaft fixed to the cam gears, that goes through, and then you've got a cog that turns this little thing that turns these two wheels at the front. And this is your crank and cam sensors all in one little wheel. The worst thing is, you've then got an adjustment screw that sits on here, and this can turn up and down. Now you set this by using a timing light, right? So effectively, yes, you can use this as your base timing. You can do that. But the accuracy is absolute rubbish, if I'm being honest. So you can set this with a timing light, but you're not gonna set the timing light at 6,500 RPM or anything high. You set it down low. As soon as the engine's under load, you've got belt stretch or a rubber belt, you've got vibration from the cams. There's a lot of moving parts going on there. This is not fixed to the crankshaft and it is certainly not accurate. But to control your naturally aspirated 2JZ, that's fine, it's gonna do the job no problem at all. But as soon as you turbocharge your naturally aspirated engine, you need a very precise way of timing the engine or triggering the engine. And this is not it. You can simply Undo this bolt, turn that all the way advanced with a turbo on your engine, even with a perfect map in it, and you will blow your engine in one go. It's that simple. That's how easy it is to blow your engine. Undo the bolt, turn the distributor, go and do one pull, and you'll blow the engine, or at least you'll get detonation, which will probably destroy the top of your pistons, and most probably destroy your ring lands, and then steam will start coming out the top of your valve covers. This thing is no good. Now, can you run the engine turbocharged with the distributor base? You can. It will work, but it's certainly not gonna be precise. You're gonna to have to have a very good tune. You're gonna to have to keep an eye on it, and there is a strong risk that you could blow it up pretty easily. Now, I did run this with a GTE ECU, just the Dizzy base, and I thought I was doing it completely correct. I had the timing done. As precise as I could, I had very, very low boost and I, I melted pistons, I blew my engine. This is no good. If you ask me honestly, do I need to have a crank and a cam sensor kit in order to run a turbocharged 2JZ GE? The answer is 100% yes. You need to have 
cam sensors and a crank sensor is the most important one in order to turbocharge your 2JZ GE non-VBTI engine. Now there are a few cam trigger kits on the market for the GE, but what makes mine better? Well, there's a lot. The advantages of this are absolutely huge. First of all, mine's not just a bracket that sits somewhere in space. I could have made that in 10 minutes, to be honest. Instead, my system replicates exactly where the cam sensors sit on the GTE. So a GTE has two lobes on the intake cam and those pass over a sensor at a different time in space. They're 180 degrees apart from each other. And basically what I've done is replicate when these little teeth here on the cam pulleys run over the sensors on the back here, that matches the exact same time or duplicates the exact same time of the GTE camshafts running over their sensors. So when you plug in a GTE ECU, it reads exactly the same. Also, when you're using a plug and play ECU or a standalone ECU, that is reading the same time. You can use the base maps from any GTE that are, has been done for the last 25 years. It's a massive advantage. Why did I go with a dual cam sensor setup or home sensor setup rather than a single? Well, the simple answer is I wanted to make it full plug and play for every application. Now, most aftermarket ECUs are only going to use one of these sensors. They only need one home sensor, but the GTE ECU will use dual cam sensors. So you need this for a GTE stock ECU, but also some aftermarket ECU manufacturers use the front sensor on the GTE and some use the rear. So if I only made a single cam trigger setup that replicated either the front or the rear GTE sensor, you might plug that in and download your base map and it's not going to start. It won't work because as I said, some of the aftermarket ECUs have used the front sensor as their reference and some have used their rear. So it's a simplification if you like. This will work if you download any base map for a stock 2JZ GTE with the 12 tooth trigger. You can turn the key and it will start as long as you've got your injectors set up for the right size. So this makes your GE engine into a GTE. Now of course you might have seen my other video years ago where I drilled holes into my GE head and I tried to do it that way. I tried to weld cam sensors into the head and then I would put a crank sensor on a GTE oil pump on the bottom of the engine. You don't need to do that now. That's why I have designed this. Uh, you don't want to drill into your head. It will warp the head if you try and weld it. There's many disadvantages. It's also very expensive to do that and it's not going to put your sensors in the right place. It took me forever to try and get those sensors in the right place. Then you have to use a GTE camshaft. It's just no good. So the advantages of using this system here is you can just use your GE cams or GTE cams or aftermarket GTE cams. You can use any cams you want out of a 2JZ as long as it's for a non-VVTi. This also plugs into your stock GE harness. So you do not need to go and get a new harness made up, which will cost you a lot of money and is probably one of the hardest things about building an engine is getting a whole new wiring harness made. This just utilizes your stock GE harness. Everything plugs in. I have a couple of other exciting little harnesses to show you as well. There's a TPS harness, there's an IACV harness, and I've got an indicated air temp little mini harness as well. So those go with this, and this also runs in conjunction, of course, with a coil-on plug system. So all of these work to basically transform your GE into a GTE, but also run a fully sequential coil-on plug system. Okay, so let's start at the top with the cam side of things. First of all, you've got cam gears, of course. They'll come in a box like this, and I don't design these ones myself. They're a generic brand that are pretty popular. You can buy them from many, many places. I choose these three colors. You can have purple or black or red. I have changed these a little bit. So first of all, I put one trigger tooth in here. So all of these bolts here are made of stainless steel. Those are not magnetic. They won't set off the sensor. 
I put a mild steel bolt in here and then I flatten down the top of the bolt so it's nice and smooth for that sensor to pass over. We've also got cam shims right here and I'm going to show you how to put the cam shims underneath here if it needs them in order to set the clearance with feeler gauges as to your gap in between the sensor and this little trigger bolt right here. The other thing that's very important to note is that one of these is for the exhaust cam which I have written EX on there for exhaust and I also write on the back exhaust and I also write on here set to stock. On the inlet we have got IN for inlet written on the front and you've got inlet written on the back and set to stock. Now the reason that I have written set to stock is to let you know that I have set these to the exact same spec as the stock cam gears. Now these are not set from the factory. In fact, the markings on them do not line up. So if you've bought these cam gears from somewhere else and you've put them onto your car, be aware. These can be even in the middle of the tooth compared to the stock ones. So I made up a jig in order to set these things. I just place it on top of this jig and I make sure that each one is set exactly to where the stock gears are because the markings are incorrect. So please don't undo these and make it straight up and down with the marking that the manufacturer has put on there because it's incorrect. You can still use those markings to set the cam gears, but you want to wait till you've got your dyno tuner to do that. I have set these to stock, so when you receive these, please don't move them unless you're actually trying to set them properly on the dyno. Next up is the actual cam trigger bracket. So this thing here is a two-piece. You've got this bit here that bolts onto your serpentine belt tensioner pulley. The pulley sits behind it here and you're gonna bolt that to that. Again, I'll show you as soon as we're in the garage. Next up is the wiring harness. Now this thing here is all made of tefs or wire, uh, shielded of course, and you've got labels on each connector here. So this one here, you can see IN goes to the inlet. This one here, has got exhaust written on it. You've got your little earth here. This here earths the shielding at one end only, of course. Then you've got CR written on this for crank. So that's for your crank sensor. This one here plugs into your stock connector of your distributor. I do put this cable tie on here in order to wrap around and pull together with the stock dizzy connector. These last two wires run right back into your cabin and down to your passenger side footwell and they're gonna plug into the ECU. Now this goes, of course, in combination with the coil on plug harness, which is also plug and play. So you can simply run that down the middle of the engine along with your coil on plug harness. Here's a little diagram and it clearly says coil on plug pins, cam crank trigger pins. And these are clearly labeled pin 5 and pin 6. You just push them straight into the back of the ECU connector and that's it, you're good to go. Now the last thing that goes with the top of the engine or the cam side of things is simply a little welch plug, 30 millimeter welch plug. And this is to block off the distributor hole. So take the distributor out and burn that or drop kick it across the road, whatever you feel like. So when I started designing this kit, I had three very important things in mind that I wanted to tick off. And they were number one, affordability. Number two, make it completely plug and play. And number three, make it a quick install without having to remove the engine. Even though it is going to be easier to install this with the engine out, you can definitely do this with the engine in the car. But all three of these things were basically stopped by the crank side of things because of having to buy a 2JZ GTE oil pump or a VVTi oil pump. It's just a waste of money and the cost was escalating because of having to buy this pump. So I had an idea that paid off. Right here is your stock 2JZ GE oil pump. This is a very good oil pump. It flows slightly less than the GTE oil pump but the GTE has oil squirters in the bores. 
Our GE engines don't have oil squirters in the bores and you can't put those oil squirters in because there is plugs in the block that you simply can't drill out to get that oil to run through to where the squirters come out of. So running oil squirters in your GE block is pretty much out of the question unless you pay big dollars and put in a whole new system that's even different to the GTE system, you're not going to be able to get oil squirters. So this pump is well and truly up to the job. This is a very good design pump. It's way better than RB pumps. It's a stout pump and it will definitely do the job. In fact, there's a lot of forums that say if you put a 2JZ GTE pump onto a GE engine, you can blow this front seal out because the pressure's too high because you don't have the oil squirters taking away some of that pressure. So the only thing that the GE pump is missing in order to run a crank sensor is the little wee part that goes down here to put a crank sensor into there. So quite simply, I designed this little thing, not quite simply, it was very hard to design, but anyway, it slots straight in here. You simply bolt it straight to the block. This is done with the oil pump on the engine. And then I supply this hole saw here, which I've made up a long shaft for it. You simply pop that in the hole on the end of a drill and you will drill through this. I'll show you all this in a minute in the garage anyway. But this really kept the costs down. This was the big breakthrough. You're basically going to go out and buy a GTE oil pump for now 400 Australian dollars that you do not need for one hole. You're going to spend 400 dollars because you don't have a little hole in your GE pump. It just didn't make sense to me. So this was a bit of a no-brainer. I set out on a mission to design this and it's paid off. It works and it puts this exactly in the right position, the same position as the GTE. There is a little round dimple that I've designed in the back there that fits perfectly on a dimple that goes over in the casting here. You just want to make sure that you've not got any casting defects around here. There shouldn't be any and this will fit straight on. And I'll show you how to bolt this on properly and drill it out in just a minute in the garage. That was the big breakthrough to keep the engine in the car and also to keep the costs down. With a GTE pump, you need to take the engine out of the car in order to get the GTE pump on and in order to get this GE pump out. The reason being is that this dips down just a little wee bit at the bottom here and it won't pull past the middle sump. So you've got to drop that middle sump. Problem is the middle sump has a flat back to it which is bolted to the gearbox and then straight along it's bolted to the underneath of the engine. In order to drop that you've got to take that whole sump off the block in order to get the oil pump out. That is a massive, massive mission in order to swap one pump over. That is hours and hours of work. That's most probably going to take you two days to pull the engine out of a car just to change an oil pump and put it back on in order to save yourself drilling a hole. That is ridiculous. So that was my pattern of thinking to make up a bracket to put in there. Don't take your engine out of the car and buy a whole new oil pump. What a waste of time. Seriously, just drill a hole and you are done. Okay, enough of that banging on. This is the box that you're going to get and it's very important for me to tell you right now that we can split the kit. So for starters, if you're buying the whole thing, that is the crank and dual cam trigger kit. But I also sell just the dual cam trigger by itself and I also sell just the crank trigger by itself. These are the two crank pulleys that you need to choose from. One is a 36-2 off a of VVTi and the other one is the bog stock 12 tooth that's off a stock non VVTi 2JZ GTE. This is an upgrade from the standard Toyota one though. This is billet. Here is a stock 2JZ GTE 12 tooth wheel and you can see that they press the piece onto the back. That's quite well known to fall off and some people weld them. It took me a long time to design this damn thing but it looks amazing. The difference with these two is that this one here if you choose the 12 tooth it's going to run 
on a stock GTE ECU straight away and all base maps that you want to download for these two are going to be from a non-VVTi 2JZ GTE. With this one, the triggering is going to be bang on the dot. You can basically start the car straight away as long as you've got the injectors sorted out. With this one, you're going to have to go into the sync settings or go into the trigger settings and reset it for a 36 minus 2 on the crank. And then you need to go to the cam or home sensor and set that up as well. On the home sensor, you select one tooth. So there's a little bit more work involved in this one, but it does give you a little bit of a benefit of slightly higher resolution for your fuel map etc with the 36 minus 2. Next on the bottom side is a little belt stay bracket and it replaces the solid bit of aluminium that you've got on your GE pump. You also get some carbide burrs with this kit which you use to do the last bit of engineering. This is probably the most annoying part but I don't want it to put anybody off because hey it's a hell of a lot better than taking the engine out of the car right? So you put your little carbide burr, I usually put two in there into your drill and you need to take down this material right here. Again, I'm going to show you how to do it in the next video. And also make a little groove here and then the belt stay bracket fits straight into that groove and it screws into the sump straight up through the middle. Something like that. You'll see it in the install video anyway. I also give you the other end to the hole saw. So you've got an 18mm hole saw here that does multiple things. You can also use it to drill through your middle sump for the oil return. I just screw off the hole saw piece here from this and I make an extension if you like in order to get that all the way through. But I leave this in here because you can then use that to drill other holes, even the front timing cover. Then we've got instructions. It isn't black and white, but there's a color copy on the website, if you like, superviewworld.com. And it simply just shows you what to do. I'm gonna show you what to do in the video, of course, but I've already sold stacks and stacks and stacks of these things. So the instructions that come, it just shows you what material to take off and where to fit the belt stay bracket, etc., etc., and how to drill the hole through. Simples. The other instructions here, this is for your front cover. So you simply attach this onto your front cover and center punch the four holes, one, two, three, four, and then you can use the hole saw to drill out those holes. It also has the settings on there to set the gap for the cam sensors at the top. And the other last bit of instructions is of course what I've already showed you with the pins and where to push them into the back of the ECU connector. The last thing I have to show you on the bottom side is the crank sensor just in the box like this. Once you've got all this done you simply just push that into the little bracket, bolt it up and plug it in. Shimples. That's all folks for what's in the box. So folks that's a summary of the kit. If you have any questions then please go to supervworld.com where this is all for sale and you can ask the questions in there and I usually respond as fast as I can. It'll also give you a little bit more information. There's lots of other products on there so happy shopping. Because this video has become how long I'm going to do a separate video for the installation on the engine and show you how to do it in the car. But for now, my name is Clayton Carlos. This is Super V World. Please subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Bye now. Mm -hmm.